Hi everyone, I'm Greg Otto with FedScoop TV, and we're here at the Security Through Innovation Summit today, and I'm talking with Aaron Faulkner, the Chief Strategy Officer of Cloud Hash Security. Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, appreciate being here. So, to start off, talk to me about what you think the number one disruptor is as far as security challenges in the federal government. Sure, I think certainly, and you've probably heard a lot uh, about this at the event today, is, is cloud. Okay. Uh, that is the first thing on everybody's mind. There's tremendous amount of pressure, both from a policy standpoint, budget constraints that are driving uh, departments and agencies to the cloud and really essentially starting to outsource their IT. And so that is uh, by far, from our perspective, uh, the biggest uh, change that's happening right now. So those agencies that are moving, it is still kind of slow, even though there are agencies that are sort of uh, coming to it. Sure. Um, Give me one or two pieces of advice for those that still have a little bit of trepidation moving to sure. the cloud. So um, we're very fortunate in the fact that we've had a lot of hands-on experience with these departments agencies moving to the cloud. Okay. So for example, um, in 2013 into 2014, there seemed to be a lot of lurkers. People kind of putting, you know, <laughs> what's happening over there from right. a cloud perspective. And then in, into 14, early 14, we started to see a lot of adopters. Okay. Um, and now today, our company, Inform Reliance, who is a manufacturer of Cloud Ash security, uh, line of cybersecurity products, but we also are a systems integrator on okay. behalf of both Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and uh, Intel Security. And so we now have 25 unique government customers that we're delivering cloud services to today. Okay. Two years ago, we had zero. Wow, okay. So just a real tremendous uh, speed of adoption, and it seems to be increasing constantly. The one thing that they're, um, they're working on and seem to be uh, making some progress is making sure that the security capabilities that they have on premise are available to them in the cloud. That's probably the next biggest challenge that we're seeing. And another challenge, whether it's cloud, mobility, internet of things, a lot of these systems can be complex. So talk to me a little bit about how these systems can stay complex, but the IT infrastructure that CIOs and CISOs have to deal with, um, how can that stay you know, complex, but you know, still remain innovative? Sure. So uh, one of the recommendations that we have is, of course, looking at a customer's portfolio of applications, uh, security topology, and finding a way to um, intelligently lay out a phased adoption plan to move them to a single provider. And so that's taking them from their on-prem where they've got name your flavor of manufacturer's products okay. in their traditional on-premise environment and getting them to consolidate into uh, a proven FedRAMP certified uh, cloud service provider like an Amazon Web Services. And then they're, they have the, all the advantages of the cloud and they're getting down to a single console view of their world rather than that kind of uh, 31 flavors of you name the technology right. across their data centers on-prem. And our customers that are moving uh, in that direction the fastest seem to be benefiting the most uh, from the results of a single console, single view, and getting away from that complexity. Switching gears now, cyber attacks. Sure. Not mm -hmm. going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. The lines are getting blurred between organized crime, black Absolutely. hat hackers, nation states. What worries you the most and are the answers more policy driven or should they come from technological innovations? Sure, I think uh, what worries us the most is uh, a little bit of complacency that we're seeing where the attacks are so uh, often now and every day in the news, you, whether right. it's Home Depot or Anthem or you name it, and the attacks and the data that's being extracted in the tens of thousands when it comes to PII, intellectual property being stolen, it's almost become the norm. Right. where it's almost accepted. And so you get kind of concerned that executives and leadership of these companies aren't putting forward the, or being as aggressive as they need to be to combat the threat, whether it's organized crime, nation states. Uh, it's just a, um, we're concerned about those executives and those uh, stakeholders getting kind of um, uh, bored basically with the <laughs> message, right? I mean, right. it's every day, it's another attack, it's another attack, so uh, we're going to get attacked, it's just the way it is, and it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. Uh, I think that if they are uh, doing the fundamentals from a cybersecurity standpoint, um, and then getting into the more advanced defenses, uh, that they can protect themselves. But it's all about planning and then, of course, uh, execution. 
And we also talked about leadership for a little bit sure. there. Um, from a human capital perspective, what can more be done in the federal government to you know, up the workforce surrounding this, but also keep systems protected and resilient to attacks? Sure. So uh, education, right, and ensuring that these programs both federally sponsored uh, and then into higher education for producing cybersecurity professionals. And I think back to 2007 and 2008 when Info Reliance was selected to stand up the Security Operations Center for the White House. Okay. Finding network defense professionals of that caliber was next to impossible. It was a very small pool of people, mostly that came out of the DOD. And now you think to 2015. We see more resumes, especially of young professionals with a cybersecurity background as the higher ed uh, programs have really started to tune themselves to create um, uh, education and curriculum around cybersecurity. So we're seeing a positive now. We're a lot further ahead than we were seven and eight years ago, thankfully. Um, and so, you know, I think that we need to continue ensuring that there's federal programs supporting higher education, federal programs for continuing education around cybersecurity, both policy and technology, uh, and then we'll be on the right track. Uh, one of the benefits I would say, go back to my other comment about these attacks in the news, okay. is that it's creating this market opportunity right. where people recognize those attacks are not going away that's probably a pretty secure profession to get involved <laughs> in, right? Right, yeah. right. Well, Aaron, thanks for taking some time out today. Appreciate the insight. You're welcome. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. For more of our videos, you can check out our YouTube channel. And for more information, as always, you can check out fedscoop.com. I'm Greg Otto. Thanks for watching.